everybody, and welcome to Books Unbound, the podcast where we unbind books to get to their hearts with your hosts, us. It's Ariel and Rayleigh. Hello. <sighs> it's nice to be back in video. Um, <laughs> Technicolor. Technicolor. And we're so grateful to everyone, as always, for being super chill about last week not having video. Yeah. And we even had some people who were like, you could just take the week off. <laughs> and we we're like... It's so true. We really could. <laughs> we never think but we, about that. <laughs> we never think about that. We actually do, though. In two weeks, mm-hmm. we're going to take a week off for like a summer break yeah. where we just don't record for one week. Um, but yeah, you guys are lovely as ever. And the important thing is to get the podcast out. And we did do that. So yeah. And it ended up being a fun episode. I feel like we let loose a little yeah. without the video. Yeah. <laughs> I agree. I think it's good to have that in the mix. So now I feel like we unlocked something that if we're not feeling well or if we're traveling Mm -hmm. or whatever, we can always do a non-video version of the pod. And uh, yeah, we got that in our tool belt. Absolutely. Raylene, how are things over in British Columbia? Pretty good. We've had a couple of gloomy days lately, which makes me very happy. And um, I... There's this dollar store that I work really close by to, so I'll go there every now and then. And okay. I went in the other day, and they had pumpkin spice air fresheners. No. Yes, ma'am. So I bought a bunch of them, and now my house smells like <laughs> pumpkin spice. And oh now I'm, we- I'm wearing orange. My nails are painted orange. Like, I'm just pretending that That's it's it. fall. <laughs> Something clicked in your brain, and you're like, I'm done with summer. Yeah, summer can leave. I don't want it anymore. That's I don't know. So I just funny. went. I just fully dove into fall as my vibe, and it's really lovely over here because of that. But I'm sure it'll be really hot again tomorrow because that keeps happening. Yeah, <laughs> it's been so hot over here. And when I landed, when I got back from visiting my boyfriend's family in Ontario, I landed and we had parked our car in um, like the airport parking that's cheaper, oh, park yeah. and fly, and so you like have to get a little shuttle to take you to the yeah. airport. And um, anyway, so I went ahead and I got the car and I was pulling out of, I was like paying at the little whatever thingy. Mm -hmm. And I said to the lady, I was like, God, it's just way too hot, isn't it? Because like I got, you know, when you get into your car on a hot day and the car is like an inferno and the seats are hot and the steering wheel is hot and everything's hot and you're just like, this is too much. (laughs) Anyway, so I was like, I, I saw this lady. I was like, God, it is so hot. And she looked me dead in the eye. And she was like, we're not allowed to complain about the heat or the rain will come back. And I was like, nope, you're right. I don't want to flood. It's okay. Thank you. And I drove off and I was like committed to being grateful for the heat because it's at least That's not true. really raining and flooding people's homes. But it's so hot that I'm like... You don't want that either. (laughs) I don't want that either. I just like a temperate thing, I suppose. Um, And I've been like, everyone that I talk to is just like, this is the worst summer ever weather-wise here. Like, it's just, it's either 30 degrees and it feels, you know, like 35 or whatever. So it's just so hot you don't want to go out. Or it's raining for five days in a row Uh, and you become depressed. And you're just like, we haven't had anything in the middle really oh that sucks um yeah it's been kind of a bummer i don't know if people can tell i have a cold i'm so frustrated that i have a cold because i got on the um i took dayquil though you guys like 20 minutes ago i was like i found that i had one (laughs) dose of dayquil left and i was like i'm gonna save this for the podcast and i'm gonna take it 15 minutes or 20 minutes before we record so hopefully i'm not coughing during the recording because i've been coughing like crazy and i feel like just constantly out of breath and i also really i made myself like the biggest cup of tea ever (laughs) in order to sort of like use this to get me through the episode um but i'm so frustrated because i was like so excited to get back home and get back into the swing of things and get back into work and i kid you not i've just been coughing nonstop for two days I have a fever. I'm like, just, I keep falling asleep oh, as well. Like yeah. I just like lay down and then fall asleep. And then I wake up three hours later and I'm like, what's going on? I have to record the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. So it's just been kind of wacky over here. So nothing too exciting to report, except that I'm glad to be back home. I'm annoyed that I got sick because I wore a mask 
in the airport oh. and on public transport. <laughs> like, like, I did don't deserve this. what I was supposed to do. Yeah. But I, like, I don't know. You're just traveling and you're, like, out a lot and you're it seeing happens. people that have different yeah. germs or whatever. It happens. But I did also do a lot of reading this week. Oh, nice. So... Um, actually, kind of before I got sick. Once I got sick, the reading really stopped. <laughs> and then you just fell asleep. Um, then I just fell asleep. So let's start, let's chat about reading, Raylene. Um, how can you tell that I'm out of breath? <laughs> yeah, are you like, are you gonna make it over there? <laughs> I literally don't know. Um, <laughs> I feel like the oxygen isn't there. Isn't enough. Of it. Yeah, yeah, it's being squashed down by the phlegm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I understand um, that feeling. Uh, okay. Ray, what's the reading sitch, baby? <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll lay it on you and I'll let you take a break from talking for a while because okay. I read cool. three books this week. <laughs> so That's crazy. I know, I know. So the first book I read was the one you chose for me, which is Untold Night and Day by Bae Sua, which is translated by Deborah Smith. Bae Sua is a South Korean author and translator who has written numerous short stories, essays, and novels. Bae studied chemistry at university and accidentally wrote her first short story while practicing her typing. Untold Night and Day was translated by Deborah Smith, the International Man Booker Prize winning translator of Han Kang's The Vegetarian. So, first off, I read this book, which was very exciting. I'm glad I finally read it for one thing. Yeah, and it definitely, yeah. as predicted, fit the hot summer vibe that we were looking nice. for. Very um, good. Yeah. How crazy, in that bio you just read out, yeah. she accidentally wrote her first story <laughs> while doing pra- typing Practicing practice. Practicing typing. Yeah, she was just That's like, the coolest thing I've ever heard. She's like, I got to practice. I got to type something. Oh my God, I'm writing an award-winning short I know. story. <laughs> I know. I keep going. She's so cool. And she was like studying chemistry. Like, she's just like a cool person. I'm like, whoa, wow. what is what's going on over there um but yeah she's written quite a lot of books but i'm not sure if they've all been translated into english this is the only one that i've come across but she's fairly prolific it seems and um i was reading an article about her and she just she seemed like a really cool person but anyway this book was super like surreal and dreamlike Uh, and so when i first started reading it i was like i don't exactly know what's happening i found it a little hard to get into at first but once i got into the rhythm of the book i was like okay okay i understand what's happening because it's there's a lot of like repetition that starts to happen Uh, throughout the book and at first i was like what does this mean but you you do get to find out what it means and like it all makes sense in the end um but it seems like based on the article i read she kind of uses that in a lot of her books this kind of like repetitive nature and i'm like that's very interesting like it makes it it gives you deja vu a little bit while reading which was cool and it felt kind of like hallucinatory is one way that i was describing it to myself i'm like i feel like you don't know what's real it seems like things could just be hallucinations to to the reader like it was very strange it's hard to describe but i really really liked it um read it quite quickly i read it over two days and um yeah i enjoyed it if you want something that's just very like kind of floaty and like (laughs) dreamy Dreamy. it definitely works but um i'm also hoping that you will read it soon so we can talk about it because while i was reading it i was like this is a really good buddy read book because there's so much like juicy material to discuss like what does this mean what does this mean i feel like it's a good one to discuss with friends so highly recommend buddy reading this you read the whole right yes does it feel similar to that i feel like i felt like that i feel like those books would be friends yeah confusing yeah yeah yeah. i feel like those books are like they're buddies buddies i could definitely see them being friends with each other um so that was the first book i read and then next up after that i read Truth Telling, Seven Conversations About Indigenous Life in Canada by Michelle Good. Michelle Good is a member of the Red Pheasant Cree Nation, and her life was affected by the 60s scoop which left her in the foster care system. She graduated from UBC with a Master's of Fine Arts in Creative Writing in 2014, and her graduate thesis was the first draft for her best-selling novel, Five Little Indians. In her 40s, she became a lawyer, a position she used to advocate for residential school survivors. So, this book, really good. Once again, really good, as I expected it to be. Um, But like we were kind of theorizing when I first picked this up, because of the subtitle, Seven Conversations About Indigenous Life in Canada, we thought, oh, maybe it's like her having conversations with people. It actually wasn't like that. It was more just like her having conversations with the reader and like kind of more like conversation starters almost too. Like um, Mm. each essay is kind of like, okay, this is something that maybe we don't talk about a lot. Let's talk about it. And 
I could get people reading the book to, you know, think about these things and kind of talk about them for maybe the first time, which was really interesting. Like there was a whole essay yeah. about the indigenous literary canon and kind of like, how did it start? Oh. Who were the first indigenous writers who like actually were able to get published and how are things right. moving forward? So that was really interesting to kind of see the that trajectory and how it all got started. And um, actually another interesting part of that was she talked about the book Half Breed by Maria Campbell, which I know oh, you yes. own and I own. We're yes. both very excited yeah, yeah, yeah. about that one. But when it was first published, they completely just like took out one section of the book because it reflected badly on RCMP officers, like something that oh. happened with her. They took it out of the book without telling her and wow. it was published oh, wow. that way. But now in the mo like the new edition that came out in 2019, which I think is the edition. one I have, they put it back in. <gasps> so I'm really excited to have that edition. But if you have an older edition, you're just like, being censored by whoever published the oh, book initially. Wow. Isn't that kind of spooky? That's really interesting. That's yeah. really spooky. Yeah. Wait, I want, where is mine? Yeah, like, I'm curious if you have an older copy. Okay, wait, I, I see mine. Go get him. Hold on. Um, okay, this does seem promising because it says updated and with a new afterwards okay, by yeah. the author. Okay, I think that's the same copy I have. Of, oh, it says a new fully restored yeah. edition. I always wondered why it central. said that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, now we. Oh, that's so. Which is really cool. I'm glad that I ended up buying. I bought that book new because I saw it in a bookstore a little while ago, mm -hmm. and then I later saw it at a thrift store. But it was an old edition, and I was like, mm. "Oh darn! I really wish that I hadn't paid full price for it." But now I'm like, "No, I'm glad that I did. I'm glad to have yeah, the fully yeah. restored edition." So that's just a yeah. You're right. Hot tip Mine for says, anybody looking for that book. Mine says so. published 2019, just go. as you said. There you go. Cool. So yeah, it was wow. a very interesting book that had moments like that, like things that I would have never thought to look into or known about so i really enjoyed it a very informative little book it's just over 200 pages so it's in a nice little compact um kind of size which is great um if you want to just like learn more about indigenous life in canada and educate mm. yourself a little bit uh, she's a really good writer i also highly recommend reading her novel five little indians which was one of my favorite books oh, of a couple okay. years ago so yeah, just yeah, in yeah. general she's amazing check her out is this your second book you've read by her or your third second she only has these two books Oh. I've read everything she's published. <laughs> there was another book that you got me that for some reason I'm confusing. I think they might have similar covers. Mm. It's like a black and white forest. It doesn't matter. Oh my it God. It just doesn't matter. <laughs> um, okay, I'm doing magic over here. I dropped a Halls <gasps> into my tea. Oh my God. So I think that will give me restorative properties. What flavor of Halls? It's just the like classic, you know, the OG lemon ginger. Mm, mm. So I think I was wondering I if it was like that with... menthol one that would just really give you a kick in the face when you. Well, drink yeah, there's it. a there is <laughs> not that powerful of it, but there is a little bit of it in there okay. so that it kind of helps you breathe. Also, That's if you guys smart. see me hovering over my tea, it's because I'm <laughs> getting the steam, breathing in the warm air. <laughs> I'm steaming up over here on purpose. She's like doing, doing concoctions <laughs> and like <laughs> witchcraft over there, <laughs> trying to make yourself feel better. Um, actually, the book that you just reviewed. Mm. Has a similarity to one of the books that I just read. So I think it'd be Jump funny in. if I just yeah. segue The last book I'm going to talk about is totally random and different, so we may as well follow Okay, that. cool. I just think it'd be fun to do a little segue because sure. there's a similarity. This week I read Bonjour Tristesse oh. by Francois Sagan. I forgot. I picked that for you. <laughs> Author of many novels, plays, short story collections, and more, the writer Francois Sagan was born in 1935 in a small town in southern France where she spent her childhood. Born into a wealthy family, she changed her last name to match a character in a Proust novel. Her first novel, Bonjour Tristesse, was published in 1954 when she was just 18 years old and became an international bestseller. At the time, it was considered highly inappropriate and some versions of the book even removed explicit sections. It was even accused of being written by an older man because it was so good that some people did not believe a young woman could write it. Oh my so, god, that sounds so yeah, interesting. I I know. So the reason that it's kind of similar to what you were just saying about um, the fact you learned about half-breed mm -hmm. is that I found out when researching this book that <laughs> I put so much energy into reading that info <laughs> bit properly that now I'm like out of breath. <laughs> oh, no. Um, yeah, that I like the one of the British copies that was published back in the 50s and in other countries as well. But the one that I, the thing that I read about was for the British edition. Mm -hmm 
removed some of these sexually explicit oh scenes because they deemed it so inappropriate yeah. that they didn't think people should read it. Yeah. And so people didn't know they were reading an, um, uh, what is that? An, not an Abridged. annotated. Abridged, thank you. They didn't know that they were yeah. reading a censored copy, um, but they were. Oh my gosh. Um, anyhow, so this is a book I heard about. This is kind of like, like an Instagram girlies classic Ooh. book like if i can put it that way in that like it's i the reason i heard about it was because it got popular on instagram a couple years mm -hmm. ago and it was like in a lot of aesthetic photos of yeah. books and i was like what is that and i looked into it and i was like you know very often the instagram girlies have incredible taste yes, when it comes true. to reading like the joan didion's of i don't know if i would have picked up joan didion if it wasn't for instagram yeah um but anyhow so I picked this book up. I found the receipt in here, Aileen. Oh, that's always scary. Um, yeah, it is always frightening. <laughs> I can't believe it, but I bought it in London oh. in 2017. Ah! <laughs> yeah. Scary. So it didn't feel to me that it had been that long, yeah. but it really truly has been that long. I think I was still living in Ottawa or in Quebec when I read, oh bought goodness. that. Anyhow, okay, here's the plot. We've got a girl who is herself, I think, 17. Mm -hmm. She's either 16 or 17, but I think she was 17. Okay. And she has lost her mother quite a while ago. And so it doesn't, it's not really a part of who she is anymore. Like the mm -hmm. grief is not a part of the story, but yeah. the, it's important because it's just her and her dad. Her and her dad are like besties. They travel around a lot together. They live in Paris and they live kind of a scandalous existence. Mm -hmm. Like, they're always going to parties, they're always dating lots of people, mm -hmm. and they're, like, really being aristocrats, right? Yeah. Very fabulous people. <laughs> and then they decide, which is something they often do, they decide to go and spend a couple summer months on the French Riviera, where it's warm That's and hot, nice. and ha they'll have a villa and it, everything will be great. So they go there, and the dad brings his current mistress which is this like nice young girl mm -hmm. who um he's always has a girlfriend yeah. and that's scandalous especially in the 50s but i mean even now it's a little scandalous <laughs> i guess but like because he's like an older-ish yeah. man with a young-ish girlfriend but um she the our main character doesn't really think anything of it she's like whatever that's what we do we live <laughs> free woohoo basically what happens is that a family friend of theirs comes to stay with them at the villa as well mm -hmm. oh, an older woman not very old but just like older like a contemporary of her father okay. and they fall in love the father and this Ooh. woman and they decide to get married okay and our main character hates this because she's like this is going to ruin our fun lifestyle yeah. and so she wants to destroy their engagement oh. And so that's what the book is about. It's her interfering, <laughs> but like in the laziest possible way. Yeah. And I really enjoyed it. I had such a good time reading it. From the first page, yeah. it was very easy to read, oh, good. very readable. Because often I know people are nervous with classics, as am I, that it's going to be like a little bit more difficult to read. Mm -hmm. I didn't find that at all. At all, I found it very straightforward, and maybe that's because it was written by a 17, 18 year old. Yeah. So when Francois Sagan wrote it, she was 16, 17, and then it got published when she was 18. Yeah. So like maybe because she's younger, it's a little bit more straightforward. But like I would never have guessed that it was written by a teenager. Right. Like I would have thought that it was just written by an excellent writer, if whatever that very means. Very cool. Um, so it's. I, I really highly recommend this to anyone who likes the unsound women or the bored women genre. Because you really do just have this teenager mm -hmm. who's just like lazy, doesn't want to study, doesn't want to do anything, yeah. but starts meddling in other people's lives. And she's so confused. You can tell that she's just like an idiot like she's like <laughs> yeah. you know what i mean like she's just like i w i think that this is what i should do because it would preserve my way of life and this woman is bad for my dad he just doesn't know it but you're just reading it and you're like you're an idiot you're a teenager yeah, yeah. and you don't know what you're doing and you're meddling in people's lives um 
I really, really loved it. I thought it was such a great book. Super recommend. Super glad I read it. Um, so yeah, there you go. Amazing. That's my review. I love that. I feel like there was other things I want to say, but I don't remember them. My <laughs> mind has gone fuzzy. <laughs> Happens to me all the time. And I'm not even <laughs> sick. I just forget. <laughs> Okay, Okay. Well, what was your third random read? My third random read also kind of funnily enough has a connection to the book that you read in that the author oh. is from France. So, okay. Yeah, look at us go. <laughs> so the book that I ended up reading, I just read this over the past couple of days and it is The Laws of the Skies oh. by Grégoire Courtois, translated by Rhonda Mullins. Grégoire Courtois lives and works in Burgundy where he runs the independent bookstore Oblique, which he bought in 2011. A novelist and playwright, he has published four novels. In 2013, he founded Caractère, an international book festival in Auxerre, which he continues to run. Yeah, that's funny that we both read books by French authors. This yeah. Week. So random. So this is one of the books that was sent to me by Coach House Books uh, like yes. a month or two ago. And one of my like sort of mental goals I had made for myself this month was to read three books that I bought this year because I'm mm. trying to like work towards that Catch goal up. of actually, yes. you know, doing that. And so this was the, the, the option that just made the most sense because I had already read two earlier in the month, including Truth Telling. That was one of them. And right. I was like, I just need to squeeze one more in. And this is a really short book. So I decided to go with that. Um, and it's like a, a foresty horror book, which I feel like is the exact vibe that I was vibing with right now. So this book basically is about a group of 12 six-year-olds going on a camping trip with their teacher and then two of the parents, two moms mm -hmm. of the children have gone with them. And it's immediately very ominous because on the first page, it just kind of describes they're all getting on a bus, they're about to go into the forest and none of them are gonna come back. <laughs> Oh, and it's like, oh, okay. oh, no. So like, you know that they're all going to die or they're all going to get lost right. in the woods or something like something terrible is going to happen. So immediately you're kind of like struck with this like, uh oh, dread. Dread. Yeah, exactly. Like just not so good. Um, and as I said, it's very short. It is 150 ish pages long. So very, very short. So it's like immediately jumping in to, um, you know, bad things happening. So it was a mm. very like exciting book to read and like very easily readable i don't think it was like a great book um because you okay. didn't really have time to you know connect to any mm. of the characters and since you know all of them are most likely going to die you kind of like don't want to get attached to them anyway so that right. was kind of a flaw in the book but other than that like it was very readable it was a fun yeah, time yeah. and it was like you know very cool vibes. One of the reasons this was kind of recommended to me in the first place was because I like the show Yellow Jackets. So I thought I would talk right. about that connection a little bit. And I mean, obviously it's a very different plot, but you've got a group of people in the woods trying to survive essentially. So that's right. the, the connection, which is, is lots of fun. Like I definitely enjoyed that aspect of it just like being in the forest and and the other fact like that the kids are so young they don't really know anything mm. and so they're like running around and they're hungry and one of them is like okay we should be careful about what berries we eat because they might be poisonous and they're like oh well that one looks like a berry i know so i'll just eat it and the other kids are like well maybe don't and he's like whatever i'm just gonna you know and they don't really yeah. they don't really have that like thought process of like let's think about all the consequences of my actions yes. they're like i'm six let's just let's just do it and so um yeah, it's interesting to see how, like, it would be very difficult to survive in the woods if you're a small child and don't know anything. Um, but I guess another book that I would recommend that's kind of similar in some ways to this would be The Girl Who Loved Tom Gordon. She is a okay. young girl who is actually very resourceful and is good at surviving mm. in the woods. So I feel like these books could be buddies. Um, but yeah, this book... Like I said, pretty good. Like a good, quick little read. Pretty graphic <laughs> in the horror okay. department. So <laughs> definitely be warned about that. Um, but yeah, I really, you know, I enjoyed it. Like I said, nothing like mind cool. blowing, but it was a fun yeah. time. And but it was still fun. Yeah, it was still fun. So cool. That's everything I read. I kind of, I just read a bunch that's of short a lot. books. Yeah, I read a lot of books, but they're all little, little baby books. Okay, well, I read one more book this week oh as well. Gosh. So I, I did remember one thing I wanted to say about Bonjour oh, Success. Yeah. And it was just that this is a very good summer book. It felt hot. Mm. It felt sweaty. Yeah. It felt good. So I do recommend that if you're in a summery classics Perfect. mood. But the other book I finished this week is The Year of Magical Thinking oh. by Miss Joan 
Didion. Joan Didion was an American writer born in 1934 in Sacramento, California. Joan's writing career started as a journalist for Vogue in 1956. She published her first novel, River Run, in 1963, and her first book of essays in 1968, titled Slouching Towards Bethlehem. She won the National Book Award for Nonfiction for the Year of Magical Thinking and was a finalist for the Pulitzer Prize. So Joan Didion is one of these like definite bucket list authors mm. for me, where it's just like, I know she's going to be great. I know I'm really going to like her. And because of that, she's becoming mashed potato yes. because I'm like, when's the right time to read her? Mm -hmm. um, and kind of, I don't remember the reason, the whim, it might've just been available as an audiobook <laughs> yeah. at my library. But I decided to finally retackle the year of magical thinking. Like I mentioned a few episodes mm -hmm. ago, I had um, attempted to read this book a few years ago, and it was just so sad yeah. and heart wrenching that I just wasn't in the mood. I was yeah. like, I can't do this right it's now. I will much. return to you someday. So I'm glad that I did return to it because it really is just really, really stunning. There's a reason that it has won so many awards mm. and <clears throat> been nominated for so many awards and is her most well-known book. It really chronicles the period after her husband dies. So really just out of the blue, they're having dinner. He has a heart attack and he dies. And then at the same time, her daughter is in a coma at the hospital. So it's just like, as you can imagine, the yeah. most overwhelming time imaginable yes um and so you know when her daughter wakes up from the coma she has to tell her daughter that her husband and that her yeah. father has oh passed God. away and then a couple of months later her daughter goes into a coma again Jesus. um yeah and what this book doesn't show and couldn't show because basically you know she has this year and she calls it this year of magical thinking the magical thinking is this awfully sad phenomenon that she's noticed in her brain that she keeps expecting that somehow her husband will come back right. like that's the magical thinking part and she's like i don't want to get rid of his shoes because and then when she like is interrogating why is that so she's like oh it's because i think he might need them when he comes back mm -hmm. and she, so she's trapped in this like trying to process this grief and of course like there is no timeline for that um and so she's just like chronicling that year that first year of his death um or after his death but so this book gets published the following year or whatever mm -hmm. and while she's on uh, doing the press for this book her daughter passes away as well oh and so then she stop. has published another book called oh gosh i think it's called blue nights or something like that um which is about the the grief that she went through with her daughter but a lot of it is in this book as well because she was going through these yeah. comas and everything like so it's really the the two it's about family and it's about losing family and it's about like when you're trying to navigate the medical system and everything and mm -hmm. it's so sad really like it really is so sad near the beginning of the book she talks a lot of not a lot but she mentions how there isn't that many books about grief that aren't like step-by-step -step guides Yeah. where she's like, you know, just somebody chronicling what grief was like for them. I f she actually had difficulties finding that. She's like, you know, you can find poems about it or mm -hmm. m myths and legends about that. But like the actual emotional story of what this person had to get through to to get through the, the grief or yeah. to process it a bit. And that was kind of part of why she wanted to write this. I I feel like I recommend this if that sounds like something that you're searching for or mm -hmm. something that you, would help you. But I also just, I do think it is such a sad, brutally sad book that if you're not prepared to read that, then you yeah. maybe give it a miss because yeah. it is very sad. Um, it made me think a little bit about how awesome, and I know you love her as well, um, the chan the YouTube channel, but she's way more than a YouTube channel. Um, Ask a Mortician mm. is um, what's her name again? Catlin. Ka Caitlin. Caitlin Doughty. Doughty. Yes, 
Caitlin Doughty is one of my favorite people to follow online. She is a mortician and makes content about death and mm-hmm. about like what going through a funeral is like and answering lots of questions and demystifying the whole process. Yeah. And I actually really feel like following Caitlin online has made me way more open to talking about death and yeah. about like grief and stuff and how people deal with stuff like that. Um, and this, I think, was also really, w- was really good for that. I I do think it, it's obviously the scariest topic, like literally imaginable, <laughs> yeah. is your family members passing away. So if you're not in the right headspace, avoid this one. One thing that I noticed really, and I don't know if you have seen on the cover, mm-hmm. like some of the letters are in blue. Yeah. yeah they spell out sense. John, which oh. is her husband's name. That's cool. Yeah, I just, I literally noticed that as I was taking a photo of it for the Instagram. I was like, oh, it's kind of spooky. Gee. Very subtle, though. It is. Yeah. You know, you know. Yeah. If you know, you know. Um, all right. So did you have any books to haul slash are you, what are you reading now that you've read all of those books? Um, yeah. So I have one of each. So I'll just dive okay. into both of them. Um, so I picked up just recently this book called garlic and sapphires the secret life of a critic in disguise by ruth nice reichel reichel i don't know how to say okay. her last name but this is one that i've had my eye on for a while because obviously i've started collecting books about restaurants books about food and um this one just sounds fun like it's literally about her being like anonymous because she's going to all these like high profile restaurants and so she can't let people know that she's a food critic because you know people behave differently when they know the food critics in the room and so she just kind of like goes undercover and then writes about her experiences which sounds super fun and i just flipped through the book and it looks like there's recipes in there too so i'm very intrigued about that one in general so cool that's the only book goes with your goes with your theme lately it does and so does the book that i'm currently reading so Uh i only just started it last night so i don't really have anything to say but i'm reading taste oh good my life through food by stanley tucci um which is just a beautiful book by the way like the inside flaps Mm. have like these beautiful illustrations of tomatoes and um yeah so i've only read like the introduction but i already really like it like i feel like i'm i'm gonna love this book Stanley's just like, you know what? My family loves food. Let's talk about it. (laughs) Yeah. So I've read, yeah, maybe like nine pages. So I really don't have much to say, but I'm sure I'll have finished it by next week because it feels very easy to read and um, Mm -hmm. it just fits my vibe. Like I I really am enjoying books about food and books about restaurants. So uh, keep the recommendations coming, people, because I still want them. (laughs) The only book that I got this week, I literally got like two hours ago someone came to drop off a book and well i didn't know what it was but i went outside and i looked at the package and i was like oh that looks like a book Uh. um and it is the orwell tour by oliver lewis it's the subtitle is travels through the life and work of george orwell so this was sent to me by icon books hashtag gifted not sponsored, but they did send it to me for free. Um, and so, yeah, it says, Oliver Lewis sets out to visit all of the places that inspired and shaped George Orwell. Over three years, he traveled from Wigan to Catalonia, Paris to Mothari, Marrakesh to Eton. And in each location, he explored both how Orwell experienced the place and how the place now remembers him as a literary icon. So it sounds very, very cool. I really like the cover. It's beautiful. I will say, and I'm literally just mentioning this so that people don't think I did it. It did come quite crunched at the top. Oof. And so if you see on Instagram when we post a photo of this, it wasn't me. Um, you would never it just do came such a thing. crunched. I would never do such a thing. It came really crunched up, which is a shame. Yeah, that's sad. Um, yeah, I don't know how, I don't think I can fix it looking at the type of damage that it is. But it is a very pretty book and I'm very excited to add it to my Orwell mm-hmm. collection. Mm-hmm. Um, as for what I'm reading, I have not chosen yet, which is kind of fun. That is fun. I uh, I finished the Joan Didion book this morning. Oh, okay. Because I, I was like, how much of that book do I have left? And I literally had like 34 minutes and I was <laughs> like, oh. I should just finish that. Yeah. Oh, you know what I wanted to mention, though, about the Joan Didion one? (laughs) I 
was listening to it on the plane. I don't know if you remember, but this was my plan. My plan was to oh, finish yeah. it on the plane. So I downloaded it from the library app. I was all ready to go. Yep. I start trying to listen to it. And I was at the end of chapter eight. It finishes chapter eight. And then mm-hmm. it glitched out. And it skipped back to chapter two. Oh. And I was like, that's weird. And I, I kept trying and it kept glitching back to chapter oh. two. Like it wouldn't move <laughs> on to chapter nine. And so I like deleted it in the airport, re-downloaded yeah. it. Like I kept, and I was like, what's going on? And then I like look at the table of contents on the app. There was no chapter nine. Huh? Chapter nine was not listed what? in the table of contents. <laughs> and I'm ghost. like, this is so sad because I had a whole vision of the plane yeah, like, ride. Where did it go? And, like, <laughs> finishing the book. And I'm like, I don't know what to do. And so it turns out you can report missing chapters and oh stuff gosh, to the library. <laughs> I know, me neither. And so I did that. I like filed a report. <laughs> <laughs> That's about crazy. the year of magical thinking and then the next day a nice man got back to me and he was like thanks for letting us know about this i've looked into your issue i've been able to reproduce it i do see that chapter nine is missing however chapter nine is actually not missing hmm? i whatever re- he's like what i've realized is that all of the chapter titles are misaligned like they're all wrong oh no and he's like but the whole book is there so if you skip to chapter 10 yeah you will hear chapter 9 or whatever oh, weird <laughs> and i was like okay and so i just skipped to chapter 10 and it did continue the story so i was like okay uh, but it's so it, strange it was glitching out though like it could that was figure the thing it out. too basically i deleted the whole book i unborrowed it oh, or like man, returned yeah. it re-borrowed it thankfully it was still available mm-hmm. re-download like it was a whole song and dance <laughs> um but yeah, I was able to finish it. But anyways, yes, I finished it this morning and I have not chosen what I'm going to read next. So that'll be a fun adventure for us to find out next week. Mm-hmm. I'll let you all know, of course. I do love that. But the final thing we're going to do today is a little bit of book news. <laughs> Having fun isn't hard when you've got a library card. Unless you're this Florida parent. A Florida man has issued a library challenge to a book in the Arthur series titled Arthur's Birthday, first published in 1989. The reason? At a birthday party in the book, the kids play Spin the Bottle, and the Florida man says this could damage souls of children. (laughs) Whoa. Florida man, you need to take a step back. It's so funny. Um... Okay, yes, as I've written here, I'm reading my own news report. Um, As a hardcore Arthur fan myself, Raylene, (laughs) someone who would literally get an Arthur tattoo, Mm. this challenge strikes me as particularly hilarious and insane. Arthur, the book and the show, are about loving your friends and learning to be a better member of your community. In this book, it's all about two conflicting birthday parties. So basically, (laughs) Muffy and Arthur both are having their birthday party on the same day, and it causes, like, a whole strife. It's, like, always a big problem. It's, like, all the girls are going to go to Muffy's party, and all the boys are going to go to Arthur's party. But in the end, they decide to have one big party to celebrate them both. It's literally a book about love and coming together. (laughs) And they do play Spin the Bottle, I remember this episode very clearly, but they do play Spin the Bottle, but it, like, lands on Pal, the dog, and it's just a big joke. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's like they, nobody actually does They're anything. They're not, like, so. making out with each other. <laughs> no, it's just a harmless game. So that, when I was looking up book news, was, like, one of the main stories, That's and funny. I was like, good lord. I love Arthur, so I wanted to mention it. But that is, um, what did, oh, yeah, my ending to this news report is, and in the end, they do play Spin the Bottle, and it lands on the dog, and it's all a big joke. Just like this bit of censorship. <laughs> <laughs> so true. Like, my God. Okay, okay, here's the next one. East of Eden, more like North of Excitement, <laughs> Netflix announces an East of Eden adaptation. Whoa. <laughs> starring Uh-oh. Florence Pugh, oh. written by Zoe Kazan. Uh, yes. <laughs> Give that to me. <laughs> so it's a film version of the novel was made in 1955 and was written by Zoe Kassan's grandfather. No way. Whoa. So this is sort of, I know, how interesting is that? Intergenerational saga. 
I know. Kazan said, quote, writing this limited series over the last two years has been the creative high point of my life, unquote. This okay. news came out in 2022. The article I found was actually like a year old. Oh, man. And doesn't yet have a director or other actors attached to it. So it's one we all need to keep our eye, yeah. eye out on. Okay. Of course, the last few years have just been really crazy turbulent for Hollywood mm-hmm. lately with the actor and writer strike, yeah. but previously with COVID and all sorts of different delays. So I think everything is a little bit uh, behind yeah, and everything, definitely. but it really sounds like it will happen. Yeah, that's Uh-oh. a huge project. Like, Isn't that really so cool. cool? A mini series. That is really cool. Netflix. Okay, it's good to know that it's not like happening super soon because I do need time to psych myself up to read the book first. Yeah. I would like to Also, read that. I just realized as I was talking, I've seen some stuff about how like influencers, which I don't consider this podcast to be, <laughs> we're not influencers, <laughs> but influencers are not supposed to be promoting stuff like movies and stuff. Um, that are currently in the cycle. I thought it would be okay because this literally, there's no other news about it yet. Yeah. And we're more just excited that it's East of Eden. Yeah. But obviously Raylene and I support the strikers. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Okay. My final piece of news. Light, camera, action. Easter eggs found in Lights by Brenna Thumler. Ooh. That one didn't really make much sense. That's okay. That's okay. After reviewing the book on the podcast a couple of months ago, or weeks ago, I got a few people letting me know that on page six, the (laughs) first proper two page spread, Mm. a beautiful homage exists. There's a building called Beset Bookshop, which is very exciting. So I had the bookmark here, but really, do you remember that in the bookmark Mm -hmm. that Brenna made for us, there's Beset Bookshop and LeMay Library. Very cute. So Beset Bookshop is in Lights, the That's actual so published cool. novel. But I can't tell if LeMay Library is in it because I even missed Beset Bookshop, yeah, which yeah. is crazy. <laughs> now I've flipped back and I've seen Beset Bookshop. So, so let cool. us know if LeMay Library is in there as well. But Beset Bookshop alone to me is an homage to the whole podcast that's very special yeah yeah that's pretty crazy um and so i will just reiterate lights comes out september 5th 2023 and i wrote down here emily told me on instagram but i stupidly did not write down emily's instagram so i don't know who (laughs) i don't know emily Emily. what your last name was but thank you All right, that about does it for today. A little bit of a shorter episode because I feel very quite sick. I, yep. I'm Double out of uh, riffing. I can't riff anymore, really. Yeah, when you're not feeling well, you know, you just can't do it. And I no. get that. I respect but that. But we you. are going to go record our uh, Patreon mini podcast, Movie Tub, mm-hmm. where we review movies and shows that we've been watching lately. Yes. I'm going to be talking about Barbie. Or Ooh. no, maybe I'll talk about... Yeah, no, I'll talk about Barbie. Please. Okay, because you gasped. What will you talk about? you got to tell us about Barbie. Well, I also watched something kind of wild. I watched Bones and All, finally. Oh, okay. That's very interesting, actually. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching this episode or listening to this episode. If you want to support us, you can check us out on patreon.com forward slash books unbound or follow us on Instagram at books underscore unbound or just share our episode. So thank you guys so much. And we'll talk to you next week. Bye. Bye.